Okay, Nuggets. Harvey Weinstein story. Okay. So we got back from a trip from New York recently, and there's a. I just. I'm uploading a video now a, a little bit about that trip. Uh, so we go to New York. Laura's got a lot of friends in New York, um, and she runs an accountability group, which I think I've mentioned on here a few times before, uh, where actors and artists and creative people get together and check in with goals. And she, it's like a life coaching kind of thing. It's more than that, but it's similar to that idea. Anyway, one of her clients or ex-clients is, and a friend of hers is a young actress who is no longer in her class, now lives in New York and said, and said to Laura, hey, found out she, we were going to New York and said, hey, will you come to my, uh, my burlesque show? So when I, when she said burlesque show, I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> Cause you know, I thought it was going to kind of be a little bit sexy and titillating and you know, it's burlesque. So it's, it's not that, but it's kind of Chicago ish or, or cabaret ish rather. It's kind of got that edge to it. I thought that would be exciting. So she puts us on the list and she's very specific about the list. Like they want details about us. I'm like, you know, it's kind of a little club. What's that about? So they get our name. I think Laura gave them our address as well. Anyway, full name, address and all that. So we go out. It's at like nine or 10 o'clock at night or something. Um, We're tired because we're Los Angeles people. We're not used to being up that late. So we get to the club and it's this little bar that's above the, a restaurant called Cipriani. Um, I don't know if the club's called Cipriani, but the, the, the restaurant, the Italian restaurant downstairs is called Cipriani. So we get there and there's just one guy standing in front of this flight of ste- steps. And we can't figure out if we're in the right place because, you know, the address is the restaurant. And the stairs don't look like anything. They just look like, you know, New York stairs. They don't look like they're going anywhere. So we're kind of standing around, looking around, and then we notice this guy, this huge bouncer, just looking at us, giving us the evil eye. And we go up and say, hi, we're um, supposed to be uh, coming to see someone who's got a show going on tonight. And he pulls out of his jacket a clipboard, and we're like, oh, okay, this is the right place, I guess. So he checks us on the list, and he lets us in. He had a rope, which I didn't see now I think about it. Of course it was the place. But anyway, he had a rope. So he opens the rope, lets us in. So we go up these tiny little stairs. We go upstairs. And it's this tiny little club, like a room, but it's very chic, right? It's very nice, like, like, <laughs> and it was a very cultured moment in there because all of the waiters, waitresses, no waiters, they're all waitresses, they're all, I would say, at least six foot, they're all incredibly thin, they're all wearing the same, these very tiny little short shorts and white blouses, but it, it, it's not like hooters, it's, but it's kind of like French... Uh, it feels like a little French cafe. They're very stylish, you know. It's kind of dark in there. There's couches. There's a little stage for a band to play on, um, and a bar at one end. And it's it's there's plants. It's it's rich. It feels rich. So I feel way underdressed. I'm literally wearing like a little combat jacket and and sweatpants. I think, <laughs> well maybe jeans, but but whatever. I was and a t-shirt. I was underdressed. So we get there and we order a couple of drinks, and they're really expensive. And we're meeting some friends. She's invited some friends there. So I meet some friends of, of my wife's, Rachel, and some other guys and some other girls and all that. And everyone's really nice and we're having fun. And then her friend comes out and says, oh, you're here. And she's a little lit at this point because she's nervous as hell, right? She's a little bit lit. She's nervous as hell. Um, and she's excited for us to be there. And we're encouraging. And she's in this beautiful kind of sparkly dress. And we're like, yeah, go for it. It's going to be great. So then we start... Uh, she goes off she goes whatever and we start drinking whatever and then the show starts right and it's not burlesque it's actually just two girls singing that's what it is two girls I don't know who the other girl was but they're singing like a little medley of songs and they sang like uh, a Bruno Mars song Uptown Funk I think it's called Um, you probably know that one right so and then they sang I think they might have sang some Michael Jackson or something but they're just kind of uh, old Nancy Sinatra these boots are made for walking so they're kind of going through these songs and a little bit of dancing in between. But it's basically like a little cabaret show they're doing. And so we can't see them. It's a tiny club. So I stand up and I go to one side and we're watching, right? And then um, I look down at one of the couches on the far side, one that we'd asked to sit at and they said no. Uh, and Harvey Weinstein sitting on the couch, right? And uh, I've jumped forward in the story. I'll go back to the bit and tell you why. So Harvey Weinstein's sitting on the couch. And I'm looking at He looks old, by the way, which is good. <laughs> he looks old. Um, and I'm fuming. 
I'm like, what am I doing here? Because he's got people all around him laughing and joking. He's got people tapping him on the shoulder and ho- and rubbing his shoulders and basically like, you know, embracing the rapist. And it's like, my blood's boiling and I don't know what to do. I'm not great with conflict. I'm a coward, I think. <laughs> I think this story kind of proves that I am because I should have said something. Uh, but he's watching the cabaret show right and he's doing things like at one point like he leans over and he's, he just kind of beckons someone over and they come hurrying over he asks them something and they run away and they come back and give him something um turns out the club we're in i didn't know this is the new location of a previous club where he had been accused of masturbating in front of a woman and coming on a pot plant in front of everyone at the club I had no idea, but apparently this club, whether it's, I don't want to say it's called Cipriani because I don't know whether that's just the restaurant, but the club that's now above Cipriani is the reincarnation of that club. So I think it's possible that Harvey Weinstein has money in it, or at least he's one of their honoured guests, and they fucking love him, this place. They don't care who he rapes. They don't care who he sexually abuses. They have no concern over that whatsoever. They just want his money, as do all the people around him. So we're basically in an us versus them there's our little group and there's all of these people around who are part of his entourage and there's only about 50 people in the club and there's about six of us as it turns out a couple of our group were in the harvey weinstein quarter not fully they weren't part of his group but they were part of i'm not you know don't, don't upset him don't upset the boat i don't you know whatever it was horrible it was horrible. It was furious. It put a really bad taste in both Laura and I's mouth for like two days. Because we couldn't... We would have just walked out of the club. Honestly, that's what we would have done. But we couldn't because the stage where they were performing was literally right across the club. And our friends performing. So we would have had to walk past her in the middle of the set, gone by, while she's singing These Boots Are Made For Walking. So we couldn't leave. So we were stuck. And it brought up a lot of issues for me because... I was angry. I, I, I Logically, I knew that no matter what I did, there wouldn't make any difference. Not like I can do anything. I also know that he hasn't been convicted yet. Despite all of the evidence, despite what I think we all know, he hasn't been convicted yet. Um, and you're supposed to let justice do its course. But inside, I'm boiling and I want to say something and I don't. We end up leaving the club and I don't say anything. Um, but what happened was I found out that I'm going back a bit in the story now is while we're having a drink before the show starts someone I can't remember how mentioned that Harvey Weinstein was going to be there I don't know how I heard that information but we kind of heard it and it was like but he was I hadn't seen him and he wasn't there at the time so it kind of felt like a, a, a vague distant thing that we didn't need to think about anyway one of the people we're with we were, we got a couple of stools. He stood up and he, we were talking. He went to sit down, someone taking his stool. And as a joke, I said, well, if I find out that Harvey Weinstein has stolen your stool, I'm going to get livid. That's when I found out some people in our group were on the other side of the fence. Because the girl who was singing, who was a little drunk, to be fair, and a little nervous, I think, came out and said, please don't say anything about him. Please don't say anything about him. You know, it's like, it's, it's, he's a friend of mine. And he's like, and I'm caught in this quandary because I don't know what to do I don't really know this girl but it's Laura's friend she seems like a nice enough person but she's defending this guy I don't know they're a friend so I didn't know what to do I don't want to ruin her night she's nervous as hell this is obviously important to her me just chastising her for for being friends with someone like that what what does that do so I just went okay okay I won't say anything okay okay and inside I'm fucking raging about it and then there was another guy there who's part of our group who was like, don't say anything, don't mention Harvey Weinstein. So he's part of that group as well. He's like, don't say anything, don't rock the boat because it might be good for us. Anyway, so we ended up leaving and boiled about it for two days. Then the next day, Laura's looking through social media. I don't do social media apart from YouTube, I guess. And tells me that there's, it's in the press that he was at the club. And our friend, there's speculation that our friend is in a relationship with him. I don't know whether she's or not because I don't know well enough. So now my wife is deeply upset because this is a friend of hers and, and someone who she wanted to mentor and encourage, who, who immediately left her group. But she's worried for her. She's like, why are you getting involved in this situation? 
This is just so damaging to you as a career, let alone the, 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 the ethical aspects of it. It's damaging to you, could be damaging to your career. This is just an unwise move for someone to make, you know. I'm a little bit more angry about it. I'm like, fuck her, she's making a decision. She's making a decision, you know, that she can do what she wants, you know. But speculation's in that. And in, the, in this press report, which was, I think it was called Page Six or something like that. I don't know, some publication in New York I think it's like a TMZ thing. So it's not the most reliable thing in the world. But they, they, they write an article that says, Harvey Weinstein was seen at this club late last night, along with actress so-and-so, whose name I actually can't remember. I'm not protecting, protecting it. Um, surrounded by people fawning over him, rubbing his shoulders and saying, we loved your last movies, man. That's what they gave the impression of the club was. My little group was not represented. Nowhere in the article did it said, meanwhile, a group of onlookers shot daggers at him, gritted their teeth and left in a huff. But then we started looking lower. I was like, I've got to check the video on this because fucking hell, the video, like for all I know, we're in it. And people will think we were part of that group. Didn't even know he was going to be there. So watch the video. Turns out the video was taken from this woman who was standing right in front of me and I saw her taking the video. But I thought she was part of the group. But she was FaceTiming or, or, you know, video chatting for a moment during the show to this person and laughing out loud. And then she started taking video. So I wonder if she's the person that leaked it to this press or, you know, she FaceTimed someone and said, you're not going to believe who's fucking here, Harvey Weinstein. Let me get video. So there's a couple of grainy videos. Nothing big happened except for the fact that what the fuck is that guy doing out in public, man? He needs to get back under his rock. And secondly, it just blew my mind how easy how much power persuades people to completely forego their morals and ethics there were it just it broke my heart to see young men and women around harvey weinstein laughing and joking and rubbing his arm and having a good time with him completely unconcerned about what this man has done how many lives this man has ruined you know and again he's not convicted Maybe they are absolute justice warriors on that. And they're like, no, the justice system works until guilty. He's innocent until proven guilty, which you should be. But he seems to be pretty fucking guilty, right? <laughs> it just broke my heart to see all these people fawning over him, you know. And it broke my heart that I didn't do anything. I didn't say anything. And it said something about my character. Um, and it affected me for a couple of days. I'm still a little bit affected by it. Just seeing him, not, not seeing him. He's, I know he's out there, but that I didn't fucking say something. What I should have done is I should have walked past it after the show. I should have walked past the mic and said, thank you all and thank you rapists. Well, just something, you know, and got booed down like I think that comedian. I think actually that's why I am, what exacerbates the, the my anger at myself is that I saw a video of a comedian or an actor, someone got up and said, no one told me I was going to be sitting next to a rapist. She said it out loud. She's like, fuck that. I'm going to say my piece. So brave, so upfront, so direct. And I don't know if you've ever been in that situation, but it's actually not that easy to say something. I can say that now, having been there. What you really want to do is just walk away and just disappear. Just get that shit behind me. But I wish I'd said something and I didn't. So there we go. Hopefully I'll learn a lesson from this and next time I'll say something and maybe get punched or arrested or something. But, but um, yeah. All right, that's my Harvey Weinstein story. New York story, part one. There are more. Yeah, they're more. All right, you nuggets. Bye.